Hey folks, this is Dave with Explorado and we are here in Annapolis, Maryland. We are at the Burt Jabin's Boat Yard here in Annapolis. Great place, lots of boats, fun stuff, but we're not here for fun. We're here for work. And this is the project that I am excited about. We've been uh, planning this for the last couple of months, ever since we got back from the Bahamas. We're one week into it. I thought I'd share with you uh, what we're doing. Let me walk you through it. We took possession of Explorado one year ago this week. This is a Nordhaven 55, built in 2005. We are 5507. Uh, she is 55 feet long, 18 foot beam, six and a half foot draft, capable of going anywhere we want to go. But we got to get a few things updated. She's a beautiful boat. We did great down the Bahamas, realized we needed to get some work done. So I'll show you what we're doing here. We're doing an overhaul on our batteries. So uh, while we were on the hook uh, down there, we realized that our nine-year-old AGM batteries have, um, well, it's time to put them to rest. Uh, they worked great while they were working and uh, they just didn't have much of a charge yet. So um, the options obviously were to either replace it with the same 20-year-old technology or upgrade, go for some lithium iron phosphate batteries. And um, well, that's what we went with. And uh, so this video, I'm just going to give you a, a high level uh, brief overview of what we're doing in this project. And then when it's all done, I'll run through all the numbers and the tech. And so for any of you guys who want to geek out on the uh, tech specs and all that good stuff, uh, we'll run through those specifically uh, in the next video. So you got to come back and watch that one. But for now, well, let's go down to the Lazarette. All right, so uh, the Lazarette, it's in the cockpit. For those of you who don't know, uh, Lazarette, or the Laz as we call it, I believe it's French for place where we store our, all our shit. That probably isn't right, but I'm gonna go with that. Behind me, it's a rudder, uh, controls. We have some air conditioning pumps all the way in the back. We have our air conditioning condenser units. We have four of those. This is our electrical panel in the back, battery control panel, uh, our bus bars. There used to be, right there, a bunch of AGM Lifeline batteries. You'll see two up top. Those are for the start batteries for the uh, wing engine and the generator. And then over on this side, besides me, there's the start batteries for the main engine. Those Lifeline 8D batteries, we had a bunch of those for our house bank. As you can see, we have new batteries. Those are the lithium batteries that we're installing. Uh, those are made by Epoch. These are 24-volt uh, batteries, uh, 230 amps each, which gives give us 1,840 amp hours of a 24-volt system, which I'll explain later is going to be fun. It's going to be a lot. It's going to let us do a whole lot of things that we weren't able to do with our lifeline batteries. If it was just a plug-and-play event, meaning I could just pull out the old ones that had new batteries, I would have done that myself. But it is way more than that. All of the electrical cabling back to the pilot house, back to the control panel, way beyond my skill set. It's also something that can burn the boat down if we don't do it correctly. So we've hired some professionals to come in. They tore apart our bait to our cabling. They went through the floor, the ceiling. They tore apart the closets. They crawled underneath the beds, uh, all the way up to the pilot house from the cabling. That's where we get control and get monitor the batteries uh, and the charging system up there. It was a pretty big project. This isn't just installing batteries. In fact, the batteries are the, uh, the half the question. The other half, that's one of two. Victron Quattro 5K. Once again, this is not going to get too technical, but I'll do that on the next video. But basically, um, you have DC and AC. Batteries are DC. That converts it to AC. We can start running things. Um, bigger equipment on the boat, uh, even some air conditioning. I am here in the pilot house now. So why are we in the pilot house? Well, we get the batteries installed in the Lazarette and we have the battery bus bars down there and the inverters down there and that's where all the, the heavy duty stuff is, but we've got to control that somehow. So all of those cables come running up here to the pilot house. Um, and then we have our main electrical panel in here. You know, we're gonna change up some switches uh, so we can control all that. We're also gonna put a Servo GX uh, seven inch screen that will um, give us a visual representation of what's going on with all the batteries, the inverters, uh, some other things I'll get to in a minute um, to show us uh, how our boat's being charged, discharged. Um, and so that's an important part of it. There are four words that'll get you in trouble at a boat yard. 
And those words are while you're at it. While you're at it has cost me lots of money, uh, but while you're at it, get you some stuff done. With the Lazarets torn up, wiring runs to the pilot house are all torn up. We're starting to do that down here as well. We actually put some of the stuff back together so we can live on the boat. That's another thing we're doing is we are trying to live on the boat while all this work's being done. We had all that torn up in here. We had to find some room on our panel for a seven inch screen. We've got some room up here and then we could probably squeeze it in down here, but I wasn't gonna be happy with that. Cause my little OCD head, there's some things that are wrong in here that just drive me absolutely bananas. I'll give you some examples and you tell me if I'm just nuts or if uh, you know you guys would do the same thing. Going downstairs to the VIP room, on the side is where we have our current inverter control box and our water maker. That bothers me. Why does that bother me? Where do you think the water tank level indicator is? Would it be next to the water maker? Oh no, it's way on the opposite end of the pilot house. Way up here is the indicator for the water maker. That bothers me, folks. So. We're gonna move that over here. That's step one. The next thing is we're gonna tear apart the entire panel over here. Why are we doing that? Well, um, while you're at it, this is the chain counter, road counter. Uh, when we lower the anchor, it counts how much chain's out. Do you think it's anywhere near the push button over here for the windlass control? No, it's on the exact opposite over there. That drives me nuts too. Here's a good one. The VHF comps are right there. One or two, that's great. Top and bottom, how do you talk on them? Well, you go to the other side of the pilot house and there's microphones over there. That doesn't make any sense at all, does it? This is a 20 year old boat, technology changes. Everyone gets that. You think about 2004, I'm not saying we had eight track tapes back in our cars, but we had cassette players that was going over to CDs. We got rid of the cassette players and you had CD players and now you can't find a CD player, but you know, what happens is nobody wants to get rid of the CD player because they might have CDs left. And then you finally do once you realize nobody makes CDs anymore. Yeah. Same thing happens in the boating industry. You add new equipment, but no one deletes the old equipment. Why? Well, you might need it one day. No, you don't. Well, when you delete something, well, then you got to fill in the hole, right? Well, that's kind of a pain in the butt. So what do people do? They just leave it. I'll give you some examples. This one had a whole lot more. We had Iridium Go, we had HF radios, we had sidebands, we had um, 4G cell phone boosters, we had, um, here's a night floor vision that didn't work, we replaced it with Cyanox Nightwave, which works better, by the way. Upstairs, there's controls for radios that we don't have anymore. That bothers me. While you're at it, we're just going to reconfigure this. It's not going to be that difficult. We're going to take apart the panels, um, take all the instruments off, label everything correctly, and then I'm going to move some things around. I'm also going to add, and I'd like to hear your comments on this one, but um, for navigation, we have a Furuno network. We have a uh, we use a TZ Touch 2. Works pretty good. Uh, there's two newer versions out, but I'm not going to go crazy and you know update to the latest version. Uh, don't really need that. But what we would like to do is, I'm sure lots of other boaters out here, we use the iPad a lot. Um, up and down the ICW, there's a couple of really good apps. Uh, Aquamaps is the best one that we use. Uh, we also use uh, TZ iBoat to control the, uh, the nav and that TZ touch. So we have these apps that we use. Uh, so we're holding on our iPad a lot. And yeah, we can get an iPad mount and just, you know, on a little gooseneck and have that iPad sitting up there. But why don't we make room for another big screen, like a big 17, 19 inch screen, put it up here. And now we could, uh, through Stage Manager and through Hardwire, we can have that um, screen with a mouse. And now we can have that um, running Aquamaps or uh, TZI, um, iBoat or um, Navionics, or Wendy or anything else we want. And we just have it right up there on the panel where we can see it all the time. Uh, we can hook in the GPS uh, to our ActiSense and some other things we'll get into later. Um, but it just works better that way. I mean, we can just hold the iPad and that's easy, but yeah, you know, we're not doing easy today. I can't wait to show you the before and after. I think it'll work out really well. So that was another while you're at it project. Well, let me go show you the other two. All right, so we're up here on the boat deck now. Um, while we were in the Bahamas, our, our internet went out. So 
Lowe's photo receptors are like, works fantastic when it works. We had the Gen 1 version, and while we were in the Bahamas, it quit. Starlink sent us an email, and then we contacted them. They're like, hey, we know your uh, antenna broke. We can see that, so we're going to send you a new third gen Starlink. Congratulations. Yay. So we got a new, new Starlink antenna with new cabling. All we've got to do is climb way up there and replace it. What's missing up there, you'll see some panels that are missing. Uh, we did have on the very top wing, we had two big domes. The big balls that all the used to be real popular with all the big yachts. We had those removed. Here's while you're at it. You know, we've got a lot of antennas up there that don't do crap. We've got an entire array of antennas and I honestly don't have any idea what any of them do. Funny story. Um, back a year ago when we got the boat, our sat compass um, had failed on us. And we really wanted to get out of underway. We are like, we had provision, we had trained. After a month, we just wanted to get, get on. <clears throat> and we needed a new sat compass. Well, we're at the boat yard. They said, hey, no big deal. We'll throw in a new Ferrino SCX21. Uh, it's about 1200 bucks. We just pop it up there and off you go. I'm like, great, let's do it. Okay, so they have the antenna. At the very top, you see the big round thing that says Ferrino at the top? It uh, looks like a big Frisbee or a big pizza pie. That's the old antenna. So I said, great, just go on up there and replace that antenna with a new one. Oh, well, we can't because the new one has new cabling, NEMA, NEMA 2000, which I'll get to once again in the other video. And you don't have a NEMA run up there. You don't have a NEMA backbone. I'm like, all right, so put one up there. Oh, so the cabling run that goes through the stack right over here is full. What's it full of? Oh, it's full of crap that you don't need anymore. It's full of cable TV wires. The other dome that we had removed already had a big old 30 pound rotating satellite dish. Yeah, you know the satellite dishes from the 90s and stuff? Had one of those. I'm sure it was cool back when it was put on, but not anymore. If you have Starlink and Netflix and everything else, you don't need that. You're telling me that we can't put new cabling up there because it can, the run is full of cables? The guy's like, yeah. In fact, you can't even run new cable up and down because they did such a good job running the cables up. What they do is they zip tie them in bundles every foot or so all the way up. So you would have to open up the entire stack, cut all the, all the zip ties, unbundle them, pull out the dead cables. And I'm like, I just want to get underway. And so what they said was, well, we got an idea. How about if right here in the flybridge, there's a flybridge and everything. This is sort of um, what we call like the brow right there over the pilot house. So the pilot house sits right underneath us. And they said, well, what we can do is open this up and way in there, we can install your satellite dish. It goes right through the fiberglass, goes up. It'll be easy. We'll have that done in an hour and you can be on your way. And then the pilot house right underneath us, we'll just boom, run a cable six feet, no big deal. So that's what they did. That bothers me. Why does it bother me? Because that's the wrong place to put it. You don't put a satellite. You don't put a, a, an antenna in there. That's where we put all of our junk, our stupid, stupid junk we've got. Wakeboards and coolers and chairs and umbrellas and inflatable floaty things and everything else. Now, I don't want a satellite dish in there. It's supposed to go on top with all the other antennas. We're going to have to move that. We're going to have to get rid of the... 19 dead antennas that we don't use anymore. Here comes the last while you're at it. And I got to be done because while you're at it, you're broke too, Dave. But anyway, so we're standing underneath this soft bimini top up here on the flybridge. It's massive. 18 foot beam. You know, it's uh, at least 12, 12 by 18 feet. We have a lot of space up here. And so I think we know where we're going with this. We're going to get new lithium batteries and we've got all the wire runs exposed on the boat let's put in some solar you got that right folks so we're adding solar panels so while you're at it let's throw in some solar panels basically two different types of solar panels and so if you look over at this sailboat over here so on top of the dinghy they have some hard rigid solar panels and then on top of their cockpit they have some flexible which ones do you want the hard ones work better they last longer you get more power out of them. Um, you can cool them from underneath. They don't overheat. We wanted to put the hard, rigid solar panels on the top. It's not as easy as just plopping them up there. You don't want them to fly off or anything. So you're going to have to get some brackets and braces. And so you don't want to ruin the top, the bimini top either. So 
We're gonna have that fabricated for the solar panels to sit on, get some airflow underneath of it, but it's also gonna be completely hidden. You're not gonna be able to tell from the water, from the from the dock or anything like that, that we have solar panels. Not that it's a big deal, because pretty much everyone has them, but um, they're gonna be tucked away nice. Once again, I'll get to the tech details later, but we got three 475 watt panels. That's 1,425, if I remember how to do math. Uh, watts, all that's gonna go in. And then of course, all the wiring run, We'll come right back down to the stacks since it's already open, right? And then down to the uh, MPPT, so the, basically the controllers for the solar panels. Um, and then that'll all be hooked into the inverter and the Servo GX panel and everything else. So we'll be able to charge those new batteries with the solar. Here we are back in the pilot house. Dave, why are you doing this? Why are we doing this? Well, so it started off with we knew we needed new batteries. The AGMs were nine years old. They'd finished their useful life and it was time to buy new batteries. And the simplest thing would have been just to buy eight new batteries, about 1200 bucks by the time I installed them myself. And then we would have been just fine. But for what we want to do, we like being on the hook. We're not um, Marita Queens. We don't like just going dock to dock and bar to bar. We like getting out there, sitting at you know, an anchor, an island or harbor for a while, going exploring uh, with our dinghy. Um, and that's just like what we like to do. We could run the generator. Yeah, we got a great 20K uh, Northern Lights generator, flip it on, cost us about five bucks an hour. No big deal, right? We also don't really want to have the generator running all the time. Um, it's not noisy, it's just a little rumble. But uh, if you're out playing around, swimming around off this platform, you get some exhaust fumes. It does burn up some fuel. Um, but it's really just not what we wanted. We wanted to be self-sustained out there on our own, um, relative quiet. We started going through our power usage and said, you know what, let's just upgrade to this lithium batteries. Now, what I'm about to say is not political in any sense. It is not one way or the other. It's just the fact currently, as of today, here in July in 2025, we have a uh, energy credit bill. So uh, it was enacted, I don't know, I'll get this wrong, four or five years ago, it's good till 2032. Uh, and basically you get a 30% credit for all of the uh, conversions you do on your house. This is our house for uh, solar and lithium uh, conversions um, set to uh, change those over. So you get 30% back, and that's a pretty good deal. The big beautiful bill that's about to be passed um, is going to eliminate those uh, credits at the end of the year. So basically, four or five months from now, those credits will go away and they're not coming back. If you want to get solar or lithium, now would be the time to do it. So that's what we're doing. It's going to take a couple of weeks to do all these projects. Does it pencil out? I'll go over that on the next video too. I'll actually give you some cost of everything, what it comes down to, um, and then I'll also what it looks like for you know uh, a week or two weeks uh, at Anchor, what our usage is. Uh, but I think it's going to be well worth it. So some of this stuff is just cosmetic, moving things around in here in the, in the pilot house. That's just a, you know, ah. help my brain sleep at night. I can't handle things not being in the right place. We should be able to go 24 to 48 hours on battery power running all the households, uh, refrigerator, freezer, lights, chargers, computers, and air conditioning as long as we don't jack it up too too much but we should be able to run one or two zones um, of air conditioning all off the batteries and we'll be able to do that also while we're underway through the inverters which is really nice to have um so we'll crank up the generator when will we crank the generator well we'll crank it up when we need to charge up the batteries um we'll need to crank up the generator to use our dive compressor um and probably the water maker i'll do that as well too um just so we don't um, put too much pressure on those batteries. Everything else can be run off the batteries. And then every couple of days, we'll run the generator a few hours, top off the batteries. When the finished product's done, uh, this company, uh, I'll tell you who we're using here at Annapolis and what they did. And they're going to give us a good diagram with pictures and videos of where everything is and all the different shuts and everything else. So we know what happens when we get away from here and we can control it all ourselves. Uh, and I'll run through all those specs with you uh, and even the costs. And I'll let you know, you know, does it pencil out or Thanks a lot for listening to me rant on about this. Um, for all you voters out there and current boat owners that while you're at it, watch those. And if you have dead equipment on your boat, just get rid of it. If you're not going to use it, get rid of it. Okay? Uh, it'll help out in the long run. 
All right. Have a nice one. We'll talk to you later.